Next Stop Rio is proudly brought to you by ANZ and Sky Next. Rio de Janeiro is one of the most iconic cities on the planet. Famous for its breathtaking scenery, laid-back beach culture and beat of the samba, Rio will play host to the 31st Olympiad. Late last year, Sky Next athletes Glasgow boxing gold medalist David Nika and rowing world champion Emma Twigg were lucky enough to visit this incredible city and soak it all in. For these Olympic hopefuls, their next goal is to wear the silver fern at Rio 2016. So we're 16 hours away from home. We're on a beach in the middle of, the, of Rio called Ipanema and we come across some Kiwi tones. We've met this great guy called Dale who's set up this hostel called Tiki Hostel in the middle of a favela, somewhere you would least expect it. And look, we find a Tiki. So let's go and see what it's all about. Tell me a little bit about the Tiki Hostel. Yeah, it's uh, situated in a community or favela here in uh, Rio de Janeiro. It's called Cantagalo, which means singing rooster. And I got to know the community through, through rugby, through teaching rugby and being involved in teaching rugby to kids from this community. So I got to know a lot of kids and then their parents. And then uh, they helped me build this hostel here over the last two years. We've been open for a year now. Uh, at the moment, we're about 70% full. and. From about November through to April, it's like the high season here in Rio, so it's really, really busy. Yeah. And we're already sold out for the Olympics, which is good news. Oh, wow. yeah. uh, bad news for my family. <laughs> yeah, we love to come through here. Um, <laughs> Thanks, man. We took a little uh, walk upstairs and we've had a look around. Just like Rio, there's a lot of colour, there's a lot of um, clever ways of putting everything together. Um, who do you expect to come and stay here? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a pretty wild looking hostel. Everything's reused. We, we went to junkyards and got everything and did it up, painted it up. and. So it looks very, very different. Um, the people we're trying to attract are, are like young, adventurous people. But that being said, I mean, we've had people as old as 80 and we've had babies stay here. So it's really a mixed bag. It's not what I expected it to be. So do you get uh, many Kiwis coming here and staying here? We do. I put the name Tiki Hostel to have something to do with New Zealand. And I think when people are searching through uh, booking.com, they see that name and they see that I'm a Kiwi. And I guess it's... It's good to have a Kiwi, you know, uh, here, and uh, I can help them out and and with their stay plan out their stay and that sort of thing. Yeah. So that's cool. It's been oh, good. It's definitely a long way from home, and I think um, anyone that was coming through and did want that cultural experience, this would be the place to come. People come to stay the same in a favela. It's pretty different, and up here, I, I always say to people, it's a poor community, but it's really rich with culture. There's really good samba up here. Yeah. There's um, really good um, boxing instructor. There's lots of legends up here and lots of cool things to, to come and see. I think there's just so much stuff here that's different for a Kiwi that it's, it's really interesting. You, for sure you'll meet a lot of nice people. They're really, really welcoming. It's, uh, it's a blast. You know, the beach culture is pretty cool. Even if you haven't got that much money, just hanging out on the beach is a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's a cool place. I love it. We went up on the, on the roof, checked out the view. The view is awesome. I was, I was just saying up top that there, you can just about see uh, as much as you can anywhere else in, in Rio. It's a, it's a sweet view right on the top of uh, this community, this favela. Yeah, it's the main selling point here. We're, we're probably up 400 metres from sea level and uh, we can hold about 100 people on the terrace there and really good views um, of Leblanc, Ipanema, Copacabana. So we've had some good parties there and, and, and we should be having some good parties during the Olympics as well. Awesome. So look forward to that. Oh, I can't wait for it, eh? <laughs> have to come check it out. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> So I've played a little bit of touch at home, but uh, it's a little bit different on the beach. I, I don't know how I'm going to go with this running business, but we'll see. We'll give it a go. Let's go. They see David in a back shirt, they keep giving him the ballings. I don't actually know, know that he knows what he's doing, you know? Do you want to go? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you tip or roll under or just pass, just pass. <laughs> <laughs> saying sucks, eh? Um, they keep changing the rules, which doesn't help. <laughs> and um, there's no whistle. Oh, there's a whistle there. I think that means the end of the game. But um, nah, it's, <laughs> it's good fun. Chegam quatro mais, o quinto abre a bola. Hey, it's Prang this one on us. <laughs> I don't even know what stop. How he says stops, I don't know when to stop. Braço direito e perna esquerda para trás. How do you find that? It's pretty tough. Yeah. Pretty tough. Yeah, body weight stuff is certainly something I've never done. You're looking a lot sweetier than I am. Though. Yeah, I'm like sandy and lost in translation. Eh? I feel um, like they were throwing you the ball because you're in a black singlet. And you just go yeah, I didn't realise it was so heavy until we did that on um, that body weight stuff. So yeah, that poor girl had no chance of seeing my body weight. Yeah, were you with another girl? Yeah, yeah. Oh so. wow. Fun for me, but yeah, she had yeah. no chance. <laughs> Good fun though. Yeah, it's wicked. Definitely a nice change of scenery, I guess. So. Nice. Having a bit of fresh air and a few sand to throw around. It's stunning, mate. Like, you've got the beautiful lights of the hills in the background and some sand beneath your toes. You can't get much better than this. I reckon uh, it's like it's like training in paradise, really. Wicked. Very cool. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your involvement with Rio Rugby. You're, you're a Kiwi, you're an expat. How have you gotten amongst it and, and what, what's been your involvement? Well, I arrived in 2005 and I literally just put rugby into Google to see if it existed over here and I found the Rio Rugby Club and came down here and found out that it was a real fun club to get involved with and been playing ever since. I've heard that there's a, a Kiwi sign on the website of the Rio Rugby. Yeah, we, we met the New Zealand consulate people a, a while ago and they let us know that there's something called a Head of Mission Fund and they gave us uh, an application and. We, we talked about our social project, which is teaching rugby to kids in different uh, favelas or poor communities of Rio. And uh, we applied for it and got the money, and so the New Zealand government, via this fund, is, is helping our club teach rugby. That's awesome. So it must be an amazing feeling being able to give back to, to the underprivileged in Rio in some kind of way. It's, it's really good. I mean, you know, you're... You see some of the kids now that they've been playing for five or six years and they're starting to get really good, the club's getting bigger, the numbers are growing and it's all on the back of having a good coach, teaching it well, you know, having it structured and organisation and so forth and we're getting better and better at, uh, at doing it, so it's, it's great, it's really good. I found the president of the club here, so tell us a little bit about the history. Um, it's been around for about 40 years. Um, it's, it's a club that it began with a bunch of what we call gringos here, which are expats. Um, in the first few years, basically 95% um, English, Australians, a few Kiwis, uh, Frenchies, mix of, of some of the, the South American countries. In the last 10 years or so, Brazilians have really started getting on board with it. Uh, with the Olympics coming up um, in the last five years, that's more of a... More of a the boom for rugby here, really. Um, the idea that the, the Brazilian national team is actually going to compete in the Olympics for the first time. Uh, so that's given more of an incentive to a lot of the players to, to get stuck in and learn a bit about the sport and, right. and try and understand how it is. Uh, so I'm here with uh, Gabriel from, uh, from Rio, and how do you think the, the vibe's going to be uh, come, come August 2016? Oh, I think it's going to be fantastic. I mean, I think Brazil's already ready. Uh, as a whole, after the World Cup, we really got ourselves into this uh, mega, mega event vibe. And they were, we were gr gracious hosts. Um, Rio was fantastic during the World Cup. And during the Olympic Games, when everything is just in one city, it's going to be even bigger. People are getting a little bit more involved. There's a lot of people that are uh, wanting to volunteer. Uh, so it's been very interesting. A lot of people that I've talked to have already gone out and, and bought tickets. So people are quite excited here in Rio. Rio!